Hey guys. In my last video, we took the Funwheel GT on a trail ride and the temperatures of the MOSFETs, the controller temperatures, got really high up to 70 Celsius really quickly. And so I thought I could take my time in upgrading the heatsink because I don't do these kinds of trails all the time. But then I was thinking about my batteries. And I, if you remember, I added two cells here in the front, which means that not only was my controller at 70 Celsius, but also my battery. And that is a lot more concerning. So I'm going to go ahead and install the additional heatsink. It's one that looks just like this, 60 by 100 millimeters, 10 millimeters thick. And we're going to expose it to airflow on the underside here. So let's get going. Okay, so here's how we're doing it. We got our heatsink. This is the old center plate of my two piece skid plate design. And I have replaced that with one with a cutout. So this is where the heatsink fits in. Now you just need to cut a hole with the Dremel and then connect it to the original heat sink that's already in there. I'm sure there's other ways of doing this. I'm not very good with mechanical stuff, but I um, put some duct tape down, cutting that out, and then that should allow me to, that way I know where I need to cut. I recommend safety goggles before you get something in your eye like I just did. Of course, I could have just redesigned the enclosure and reprinted it, but it's a long print and I don't feel like redoing it. Plus, I need to then move my inserts, which is a ton of work. So I'm just doing it the hacky way. And if you think I'm crazy to drill or to cut into this while the vesk is in there hooked up to the battery and everything, I'm not worried because at the very bottom is a three millimeter aluminum plate so there is nothing that can damage in there famous last words There we are. So the hole is done. The heat sink fits in there. Now you can see below the aluminum plate and here the new heat sink. That will then be exposed to outside airflow through here. And the reason I didn't mind being a little imprecise on the outsides when I made the cuts is I need space to fit silicone in. So this should make it easier to put the silicone in so that it's all watertight. Not that I'm making it waterproof or anything, but I don't want the dust and sand to come in from the bottom. Okay, now I have some thermal paste that I will put here. for uh, improved heat transfer between the two heat sinks. That's all I got. And 
Got some silicone on the sides, but I'll fill it up with more later. But there we go. It is in. And now I'm going to let it dry. And then tomorrow I'll really fill it up with silicone or maybe with hot glue. I'm not sure yet. So now I have sealed it up with silicone as good as I can. I can't see any more black filament. So I think we should be good. Time to close it up. Nice and sealed. We should be good to go. Time to give it a try. All right, starting temperature 30 degrees on the MOSFETs and 25 on the motor. Very similar to what we had last time. Let's see how it does now. But they're still at 40. So remember last time when we did it with floaty? Floaty got up to 70 or what 75? No, 80. Yeah, so last time when I did this without spader aid, the hub went up to 80 Celsius right in this section and I know Zive because I didn't realize that. I know Zive because because I didn't realize it would throttle and I didn't really look at the temperature I didn't expect it to go up to 80 Celsius so quickly just from my house to here oh. Jesus. Yeah, it was at seven. It was at 80 Celsius. That's why it starts throttling at 80. Now the motor is at 50. That's a huge difference. So now we know that the fader rate really is making a huge difference. Because that was the exact same distance we did. Look at that. The motor is at 50, 52. But that's but that's a huge improvement on the motor with the fader rate. How's the cooling doing? 44, that's awesome. Wait, I want to see how, I want to see if it feels warm. Yeah, it should feel like 44. Can you even feel any warm? I, I can feel a little heat, yeah. A little, a little hand, little? like a good hair, hand warmer. Yeah. So at this point in the ride, the camera battery ran out. But what we learned is that for the controller, the external heat sink did make it big difference. The temperatures did go from 30 to 40 Celsius faster than I had expected, um, but then it never exceeded 50 Celsius despite it being a very hilly ride. We climbed over 1200 feet. Um, I assume the ambient temperature does play a big role. That's why it did reach 40 Celsius relatively fast. It was about 18 Celsius or close to 70 Fahrenheit outside, 
on a hotter day it might also fairly quickly reach 50 celsius but then the temperature differential between the outside air and the controller will help keep the temperatures at bay on the motor side the stator rate was a huge success the same exact motor at the same spot the same ride hit 50 celsius okay maybe 52 versus 70 in the same conditions if anything i was riding faster this time around i can only recommend to anyone with those hub motors to add stator aid to your motor but what we did see is that stator aid helps out a good bit but it is no replacement for good motor design. So I'm really curious to see how the Hypercore does in my one little plus based vest conversion. I expect the Hypercore to do much better and I don't have stator in there yet and I, I don't intend to take the hub apart until I have any, any reason to do so. All right, this is it. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.